Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of CLR, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I am a board-certified criminal defense lawyer it's where I actually go to trial and I win cases. Uh, today, we are going to be reacting to uh, Trap Geeks, uh, the demons of Duval County. Now, there have been a lot of uh, requests for this, so that's why we're doing it. We're also going to be in a little cameo uh, with Mr. Uh, Trap Geek, and uh, so we'll look for that sometime down the road. Uh, the um, here's the thing when I first did who I smoke I got a lot of shit from a lot of people saying uh, he has no idea and you're right I when I did that that I, that was a cold reaction um, and all I was doing was reacting to what I saw at the time not really understanding uh, what the beef was between uh, young and ace and uh, and Fulio. I it was only when I saw watched did uh, um, what was the other one? When I see you. Yeah. It was only when I uh, watched it, When I See You, that I, uh, I kind of, it kind of hit me, you know, what the deal was with those guys. So this is uh, going to be, and I haven't seen this, so this will be my reaction uh, as you first see it. So without further ado. This is be my room right here. I'm going to shot my house up out right here on the bed, me and my little brother, Quan Quan. They shot my house up from right up. This is my mama shit right up. They shot my mama house up. They shot this part right up. My mama was in the room. They shot that So you can tell just off of the sheer, uh, just two seconds of this video that this young man is growing up uh, in violence. You can tell that this he's growing up with gun violence. He always spent on my shit. But then we doubling it back though, for real. Come here though. The ATK gang. Investigators say this organization is connected to a string of murders in Jacksonville. There's many names for ATK. Ace's Top Killers is one. Nine people, you know, potentially responsible for the 15 murders that we know of. And So, murder is on everybody's mind. This is a... Uh, uh, real culture of violence. I mean, it's a bad area of Florida. It's a bad area of Jacksonville. And this cop is talking about 50 unsolved murders. And who knows what else? Today we're shooting scenes for um, When I See You, Who I Smoke. Uh -huh. Who I Smoke came out of nowhere, went crazy, kind of made it more mainstream to where people who don't even know y'all, they were tapped into it. Did you and, and like I said, when I, when I did that reaction to Who I Smoke, no clue that it was about, you know, I should just have known by the title, but but I just, I was captivated by it. I thought it was a, a good video. I still think it's a good video in terms of the art, artistry in the video. Make them do that? Oh, I, I took it too far when they made a song for a speaker. Once the dead get involved, it's already too far. See, he said, once the dead are involved, it's already too far. Which is common. I I would like more people to think of it that way, but he did he did respond, and there again we have the escalation. What is up, everybody? For the past few months, the most talked about song on social media is the Who I Smoke video from Young and Ace. It exposed the mainstream to the deadliest rap feud that's been going on for years, and it's happening in Jacksonville, Florida. Rappers from there are on a completely different wave, hiding the clues to revenge killings inside their music videos, taking the beats from classic pop songs, and trying to rap the most demonic shit over it. Young and Ace and his crew remixed the classic Vanessa Carlton song, A Thousand Miles, and flipped it, filming at a plush golf course, smoking cigars, all while dancing to lyrics that celebrate the deaths of their rival crew, led by the... And they're smoking on these guys, and, and we know what that means. Perfulio out of North Jacksonville, who I smoke went viral, hitting 16 million views in one month, and getting reactions from all the biggest influencers online. Who I smoke... No! <laughs> hey, Julio, come get this nigga boy. He playing with your top. This is one of the most savage videos I've seen. Just, you know why? They show one gun in the video. But the way they seem to be just nonchalantly happy, like, enjoying life while clowning the niggas who died? 
so Fulio had to retaliate in a darker, more ominous way, remixing a classic Fantasia song and in the music video printing out a big poster of two of Ace's friends and his blood brother who died by Ace's side in a drive-by shooting outside a Japanese steakhouse. Ace it is just so sad, honestly, when you see these young guys with a lot of talent uh, just getting wasted away. You know, if you're if you're young and you got talent, you stay away from uh, this kind of, you know, the guns. Stay away from the guns. Period. The only one in the car who survived. Since then, both Fulio's crew and Young and Ace's crew released this song after this song towards each other, leaving hidden messages in the music videos. Where is Corbin Johnson? The 18 year old's parents say they dropped him off last week at a job interview and they never saw him again. He left his house Wednesday night. Here's a picture of him behind us. And there's little in the way of clues as to where he might be. Corbin ass was lost until they found him in that bag. Oh. Corbin Johnson. When you spit out details like that, you know, that may or may not be public, especially if they're not made public, what is that? Self-snitching. Was last seen alive in July of last year. Then last Friday, a man discovered the, the victim's skeletal remains. But what makes this situation real cold is some of the folks beefing are literal cousins. Blood relatives caught up on opposite ends of the feud. Now, now, it is your cousin. your cousin, man. It's a real cousin. That nigga cousin. I'm gonna go my nigga cousin. The land size that's not in Alaska, and that's Jacksonville, Florida. Florida's always had a huge presence in rap music, especially in the last two decades. But its biggest city, Jacksonville, never really got any mainstream success until now. And that's all because of these viral diss records between two crews. Young and Ace is the face of ATK Gang, which mostly occupies the west side of Jackson. So you see the ATK gang and you see these guys with all these guns. None of them are prop guns. And, you know, it, I love it when somebody decides to make a change. And I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's got to happen. They can't continue to have these unsolved murders. You can't continue to have these guys wasting people away. You know, I mean... Over what? What's the beef over? You know, and it, it's beefing just for the sake of beefing. His rival Fulio is the face of KTA, alias Kill Them All, which is an alliance between two groups. Fulio. So you go to trial on a suspicion of a homicide, and you're a member of KTA, Kill Them All. You're starting out in a hole. Gang from the north and Young and Reckless, a crew from the south side. What's worse about this beef is the amount of mutual friends both camps had at one point in time. Ace and Fulio were never exactly close, but they did have mutual friends such as Queso, who right now is locked up with his own father, charged for two murders, including the killing of Fulio's blood brother, Bibby. After Bibby's murder, Queso would notoriously walk around wearing Bibby jerseys, taking photos like it was a trophy. He even really... See, when you do that, when you disrespect like that, and you flaunt it, that is motive and that can be used against you in court so if you're walking around with Bibby on your shirt because you are enjoying the fact that he was smoked and you're flaunting it that can be used as a consciousness of guilt an album in 2019 putting images of his dead ops as the cover like a Mount Rushmore of fallen rivals Jacksonville police or JSO are notorious for not cracking cases in fact 70% of murders in the city go unsolved so, seventy percent of homicides go unsolved. That is no incentive for anybody to de to deescalate. Folks online came up with the catchphrase "Jso loves Queso" for the simple fact that he telegraphs what he's doing on social media. You see a hot lady? Come here, boy! Come here, boy! All the you put the shit on them like that online, and guess what? You're gonna be behind bars in a very relatively short period of time. So songs have millions of views on YouTube, and he was actually very close with King Von. The two had music together. Queso even appeared in that infamous video where Quando Rondo and Von were joking around with each other back when they were on good terms. Dirty ass, Queso <laughs> was there as well. 
but back in jacksonville, queso had a well-known reputation for demonic antics. he famously tried to organize a team deathmatch in real life with his own cousins, who repped the rival gang, kta. what's up, where you at? come on, let's do it on a team deathmatch. right now? yeah, i'll see where's us too. look at my cousins. they we look alike. my cousins don't want to talk. he's trying to act all <laughs> he's trying to act all hard. And see if Trap Geek has this. You know the cops have this. One of the cousins on that live was named Lil Nine. A month after that back and forth, Lil Nine was leaving a gas station when his car was ambushed. Shot 12 times from a rifle inside another car, sending him crashing into a rental wheel tire shop, where Lil Nine was pronounced dead at the scene. While folks at the tire store were trying to revive him, Lil Nine's friend who was in the crash with him was frantically walking around filming inside the store. Fuck niggas play. Play. Fuck niggas play. Fuck niggas play, man. Of course, Queso responded with a video of his own, laughing. Get out! <laughs> Get out! Aside from the evidentiary value uh, uh, that this may or may not have, it's just fucking cold. It's just really cold. Um, somebody's got to instill some passion and compassion in, into these young men. Um, there's more to life than killing life. Then Queso's blood brother, also Lil Nine's cousin, would recreate Lil Nine's death video from the tire shop. Y'all fuck niggas play. Y'all fuck niggas play. Y'all niggas play. 60 days later, Queso dropped a music video, and in it, we see him putting a photo of his own deceased cousin, Lil Nine, in the microwave. See, the crazy part is, everybody that's beefing at one point in time was cool. Queso met Young and Ace in the ninth grade. They've been friends ever since. But the rival Fulio likes to remind Queso that back in 2015, he was hanging with them and even had the nickname Six Block Queso for his affiliation with Fulio's gang, Six Block. Even Young and Ace admits he was a fan of Fulio's music before their beef really escalated, but a series of unfortunate events would draw lines in the sand. Neutrals had to pick sides quickly. At a block party in South Jacksonville, it's in YNR territory, Young and Reckless. A crew led by YNR Mookie and his lieutenant, Slugger T. Ace and his gang show up to the party and get into an argument with YNR's leader, Mookie. Shots were fired and a bullet grazed Mookie's skin, with his lieutenant, Slugger T, shooting back. But Ace and his crew managed to escape the party, leaving Young and Reckless and Ace's crew on bad terms. On top of that, YNR's leader, Mookie, was already friends with Fulio's cousin. This made it easy for YNR and Fulio's gang to click up, creating an alliance under the name KTA, or Kill Them All, with one enemy in common, Young and Ace and ATK. The trends in Jacksonville at the time were not good. It was marking an increase in the murder rate year on year. In 2017, Ace would drop the song Go to War. This was an open invitation to anyone to go to war. It... One could weave together these beefs through through their music and and really create a story for a jury if you're a prosecutor and like i ha i've seen so many people say stuff about you know the feds are watching this feds are watching in atk to retaliate not long after ace's home was shot up but the tipping point was soon to come a few months later one of ace's friends was out on a mission looking to avenge a robbery that had happened to him he knew exactly where the robber was on the west side of Jacksonville at Fulio's cousin's house. So he snuck into the house, throwing a brick through the sliding door, entering from the back where he began shooting. No mask, no gloves. He couldn't get who robbed him, and instead he ended up killing Fulio's cousin, Zion, and wounding a nine-year-old girl. If this was the start of... And wounding a nine-year-old girl. You know what happens to guys like this in prison? You kill a young girl, guess what? There's a code in prison. And you don't, you don't hurt kids. And you're going to wind up in protective custody and do in solitary for the bulk of your stay. War, Zion's death was the catalyst. Not long after, Zion's sister was shot 14 times in an attempt to prevent her from going to trial and testifying. She miraculously survived, and young Anais's friend who did the shooting was sentenced to life. But things were just getting started. Fulio's cousin being the first death in the... See, one of the things that guides human behavior is the fear of consequences. You know, 
that's why I tell all you guys to build, 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 build. You're building something so that you have uh, something to protect. You have something to protect. You make better decisions for tomorrow. This lack of concern for tomorrow is a product of a young mind and a lack of insight. Eve meant KTA were looking to get revenge swiftly. They needed to make an example. Ace's music was starting to pick up steam. His new song, F That, was getting millions of views on Worldstar in mere days. Fans were already comparing him to Youngboy. Then a week later, this happened. Four young men were in this car when they were shot. The vehicle pulled up to their Chevy sedan, opened fire, then took off. And one is in critical condition at the hospital. Keontae Bullard, the only survivor of the quadruple shooting. It's a Tuesday in June of 2018. Ace, his brother, and two friends were going to Wasabi, a Japanese steakhouse, for Ace's friend's 18th birthday. Everyone was in good spirits, taking photos. It was a celebration. But little did they know, the whole time, they were under surveillance. Rivals had found out their location because of Ace's Instagram story, taking photos outside the steakhouse. Ace even recorded his friends eating inside the restaurant and posted that too. So th There again, we have social media being the crux of somebody's downfall. Enemies waited outside, watching them eat, then followed them leaving the restaurant, driving along the highway. When they got to a red light, the shooters opened fire on the passenger side of Ace's car, killing his two best friends and his brother, leaving Ace in critical condition. It was a quadruple shooting, and Fulio got the news before anyone else did, except he thought Ace was dead. <laughs> the boy lost the Fortnite match. <laughs> I took over the Cold just cold. It's just that's some. You know, I don't give a shit about your cousin. I don't give. You know, f fuck that. Give a shit. I mean, honestly. He's better, bro. He's better than this. Of course, Ace survived, but he lost everything: his brother and his two best friends. The attention, however, was helping grow his career. NBA Youngboy would FaceTime him to record a song, and it also motivated Ace to make his biggest record ever called Pain, which went viral and as we speak has 50 million views on YouTube. But the blood spilling was not over. Every time Ace would drop a song, his rival YNR Mookie would use the same song titles to make a diss track. The Jacksonville police even created a whole new department called the Violence Reduction Strategy Team, whose whole job was to basically comb through music videos from both camps looking for See what I tell you. Clues. The assistant chief even said in an interview, I don't think their primary goal is to entertain, but they are making real rap music. And at the top of the next year, in February 2019, Fulio's little brother Bibby was the next target for assassination. Bibby was just 16 at the time, and he was coming home from school one day in his own neighborhood on the north side of Jacksonville at the Hilltop Apartments. He was sitting on a gazebo in the courtyard of his complex with a friend. The two were looking at their phones when all of a sudden, pounding gunfire erupted. Bibby and his friend dropped the phone and jumped. Both started running in different directions, frantically looking for cover. A total of 60 rounds were shot in under 15 seconds. 60 rounds in under 15 seconds. That, that is just an insane amount of bullets. And a young, and I'm going to use the word boy here because that's what he is. A young boy not even done with school yet should not have to worry about that. He should worry about, you know, whether the girl's going to go to the prom with him. He should worry about, uh, you know, get, making the football team or worry about, you know, his driver's license. Should not have to worry about getting shot. He was killed instantly. A year later, when the court documents were unsealed, the police named Queso as the gunman responsible for Bibby's murder, saying that they drove for hours, circling the complex, parking, waiting until finally springing out and unleashing Draco rounds in Bibby's direction. They so when you're going around the parking lot, there's probably surveillance footage showing that. And guess what? That's first degree intentional murder, uh, premeditated murder, which in Florida, um, if it's for the right reason, it can carry the death penalty. Queso allegedly walked up to Bibby, who was on the ground, shielding himself from the gunfire, and executed him at close range, before fleeing the apartment complex in a gray Nissan. The court documents also mention Queso's affinity for wearing Bibby jerseys, and posting it to his IG page in celebration. Queso's bond is currently set at $4 million. 
Profulio losing his brother and his cousin in a short period of time was devastating. But 2019 was also the year his music was going to the next level. A million views back to back to back consistently. And he was doing it all independent. Profulio was a big deal in Florida, but not quite big enough to be touring the country on his own. Unlike his rival Young and Ace, who was booking shows in multiple states. Just a month after Fulio's brother died, Ace was performing at a nightclub in Waycross, Georgia. Him and his crew went back to the hotel to relax by the pool when they were suddenly ambushed. An SUV pulled up and a group of guys hopped out shooting. Queso was there and didn't hesitate for one second to shoot back. When it came the fact that he wouldn't hesitate, the fact that these people don't, don't have the slightest code or restraint, um, you know, we, we've talked a lot about drill and, and you know, these gang wars, um, and, you know, I'm all for Second Amendment rights, I'm all for carrying a weapon if, it, uh, if you have a need for it, but I'm not for senseless killing of young men, you know, no one should be for that. Those boys, Rallo, died at the pool in that shootout. Only Ace's side got arrested for shooting back. The other gunmen were never found by police. Queso would say the quiet part out loud in his song, Been Dead, where the lyrics go, should have killed me in Waycross, they hopped out with the Ks. Me and Scotty busting back, we were on the same page. That's the same music video where he puts his cousin Lil Nine in the microwave. A month after dropping this song, Queso was arrested for a whole different murder alongside his father, who was charged with accessory after the fact. Allegedly, they were getting revenge on a rival rapper named... Fathers shouldn't teach their sons how to murder. We really shouldn't have to say that, you know? And this is not a race thing. This is not a... A uh, hate thing. This is just a common sense thing. Um, it's just sad all the way around. ATA Lil Buck, who dissed Queso's older brother that died in a van full of Queso's relatives when two cars rolled up, blocking them off, and put 100 bullets inside the car. Lil Buck was Fulio's close friend and a high priced target that ATK got the drop on, allegedly rolling up at 11 in the morning while he was applying for a job to assassinate him. Queso posted to his Insta story right after, saying, I'd kill a dude, then get my toes done. I'd kill a dude and get my toes done right afterwards. That's going to be used against him. Trust me. Leaving a pedicure with the caption, kill a N-word, then go get my toes done. This wasn't the first hit done outside a job site. Another rapper, Jump Out, who beefed with Young and Ace and ATK, was killed while waiting at... By the way... It'd be interesting to see if the cops could find a pedicure bill because if they found a pedicure bill, um, that makes that statement all the more relevant. ...to apply for a job at an Amazon warehouse, leading to the infamous line on who I smoke where they say, found out where he was working and clocked him out. The war had escalated to a point where, no matter where they were, no matter who it was, one side was shooting at the other and the other would shoot back. We can count a dozen of Fulio's friends who are locked up and YNR Mookie and Slugga T are behind bars too. Even Fulio's girlfriend got shot in the head. Y'all thought I was dead. Y'all ain't underscore this yet, a boy. And to this day, Young and Ace still has a bullet casing in his butt from the quadruple shooting outside the Wasabi Steakhouse. That's it for this video. Let me know what you want me to cover in the comments below. And I'm Did you hear what she just said? Y'all thought you scored, but and I thought I was dead, but y'all ain't scored yet. It It, it is almost like a, a war or like a, a battle of attrition, um, you know, which, you know, you, you win by uh, eliminating your ops. It's got to change. It's got to change, you guys. It just has to motherfucking change. The, uh, it's just too much good that could come out of, uh, good lives to be destroyed by senseless, senseless gang violence. And I know I'm really preachy in this reaction, but, you know, I don't know how else to be. I mean, I, I, I really would like to see your comments and, and tell me how I should be. How should I think about this? Should I think about this as cool? Hey, man, it's cool. Look at him and pop, 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 pop. You know, I mean, bullshit. 
uh, you know, the one little girl fucking shot 14 times and she lived. You know, I, I, and here's the thing. When that happens and they're a witness and she tells her story about who shot her, that's powerful testimony. And to be taunting people, oh, you didn't kill me, but you can keep trying on, on the internet. I mean, uh, on Instagram or whatever feed that was, it's just it's it's just fanning those flames of hate, uh, fanning those flames of war, and really that is what it is. It's war, um, and wars end. I don't know how they end, but this has got to end. So this has been a somber Bruce Rivers on uh, Criminal Lawyer Reacts, um, and it gives me a better understanding of the beef between these guys and how many unsolved homicides related to these two gangs down in uh, Jacksonville, Florida there are. It's really got to, something's got to change. And only we can be the change in your small little circle that you have, wherever you are. If you're in Jacksonville, change. If you're in Chicago, change. Be the power. Be the power of change for good. Um, Love one another. Take excellent care of yourself so you could be the rock that others depend upon. This is Bruce Rivers, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Hope you uh, take my words as they're intended, and we'll see you next time. And if you're watching this, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and, uh, and if you decide to, follow, be a Patreon member. Thanks.